Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Premier League weekend review. Yeah, I just did a Premier League review video, but since the jerseys were already up, I said, okay, we might as well go for it. Uh, first, also, it has interesting storylines. However, I mean, I, t I said it from the get-go, it's the most interesting thing uh, in the Premier League at the moment. We know who's going to be champions. We know two and three are almost more or less set. Um, I don't think we'll get a title race. It's just uh, I don't see City losing the ground. I don't see it. So, uh, so therefore, I don't think we have a title race. It's all about the last spot. And what seemed to be a four-way race, maybe it's not a five-way race, or it's only a three-way race. Uh, it's a complete crapshoot in many ways. So uh, it's a toss-up. I mean, choose which team you like. Um, it, it's so funny. I mean, uh, on the background, yeah, Chelsea won the Club World Cup. That's why I chose to wear them. Arsenal did not play. However, thanks to the results going their way, they actually improved in the expected standings by quite a bit because all the others just did not cover themselves in loads of glory. And so for the upcoming head-to-head, -head, Arsenal will make up now points because the other lost. Um, lost. And it's kind of... I barely remember. Never had a team looked so good that did not play. <laughs> it's really, I mean, and that's the only, all, only reason maybe because that we would say though Arsenal is potentially the favorite for the fourth spot because, yeah, we didn't see how bad they are at the moment, although they just beat Spurs. Uh, well, Spurs, Wolves, and Wolves did uh, Spurs in. So, yeah, maybe we can by transitive property, which doesn't work in soccer, uh, we can assume a few things. Um, if I would be guessing... I would think that the most talented team should make it, which means it's Manchester United. Although they also have so many, 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 many troubles. And yeah, <laughs> it's just weird. So let's start for the big note uh, for the for the English game. Although hardly anyone seems to care about it. Chelsea won the Club World Cup. I was a little bit annoyed that I couldn't see even highlights of that somewhere on the packages that, 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 that I have because you usually at least the Club World Cup I could see but I guess thanks to Olympic coverage there was not much uh, that I could do about it because uh, Austrian TV has the FIFA contract but I guess they put their all behind the Olympics so a very bad timing for the Club World Cup I gotta say why this cup could not have been played in January probably the AFCON has something to do with it yeah I guess that's the reason whatever Chelsea won, and is Kai Havertz becoming a cult hero? You know, one of those that doesn't really play well, but when it counts, he scores the arguably most important goals in Chelsea's his history of getting them a second Champions League trophy, another first Club World Championship. Again, I don't make much of the Club World Cup. Please, uh, it's it's in many ways a bogus tour tournament that just tries to feed off the, what the Intercontinental Cup was. The Intercontinental Cup I, I actually liked, but it was never an official trophy. FIFA not tried to legitimize it, but my problem with the with the competition is not the idea of a worldwide champion. I think that is all right, but the gap between the teams is it, it's not an even competition i mean it's more it's, it's more or less um europe atop everyone else then south america although they have been challenged and then uh whoever is between uh concacaf the uh, uh afc and caf maybe one of those can make it uh into a third or fourth place i think this is where the competition is act actually at at but uh, other than that uh, that's where the weakness is and I don't even think that a uh, 24 or a 16 or 32 team tournament will change anything in that. The only hope that those um, the other world teams would have is that the Europeans don't take it seriously. Where this is a competition that's super taken seriously in South America. Of course, I mean, it is the one time where you can prove that you might be better than the Euro, the Europeans who get all the headlines. I just want to mention uh, AS Pire from Tahiti. That is a team I never thought I would hear about. They played in the Club World Cup, so at least something there. Okay, Champ, uh, from, the cha <laughs> from the Champions League. No, cha the Champions League is coming up soon. <laughs> Going from the World Club, FIFA Club World Cup 
to the championship, the Premier League. Uh, we gotta start with the uh, United game, which was the first game. And uh, base, basically, whatever we can say about United's uh, performance at Burnley, we can say against Southampton. Maybe that Southampton was playing overall better because they have been a pretty uh, amazing team to watch as of late. But United had the chances, they took the lead through, Sancho uh, looked almost a little bit comfortable and then Adams uh, right after, after almost the same minute as Burnley makes it 1-1 and then it's again, yeah, yeah, can we hang on Ed? Uh, what I find even more annoying is how the United players are saying, we want to have this coach, we want dev coach, the, the training in this coach uh, under Rangnick is so uh, from yesterday or whatever. If you do not perform, you should keep your mouth shut. That's all I want to say to do that. Uh, Fortunately, Chelsea Arsenal got postponed, but I actually saw Everton against Leeds, which was a pretty surprising 3-0 win for Everton. A huge win for them, because that actually gives them a little bit breathing room. But it was also uh, a little bit lucky, uh, because Leeds uh, twice hit the wall with great shots. For Moreno, but Seamus Coleman and Mike Keane gave uh, Evan a tune tune lead, and then uh, a, a rather late on Gordon adds a third one. And at that point, you know, in the sec second half, you could see that Leeds is not come coming back. Uh, kudos though to the Yellow Sox for Leeds that actually looked really, really, really good. Watford seemingly is now the worst team in the, in the Premier League, losing 2 0 at home to Brighton. Uh, Manchester City do the two diligence with a 4 0 against Norwich. Uh, Liverpool, without convincing in any way, get a dirty win at Burnley. Uh, Fabinho scoring the goal, but uh, didn't look good at all. I think if Wad Vejos has his shooting boots on, uh, it might well have well been a draw, and then no one would be talking about Liverpool's title chances anymore. In that case, yeah, they are just hanging about, having a game in hand, which puts them six behind. And if they will win, then at City, they are three behind. Not gonna happen. I'm telling you right, right now, as much as I personally probably would love for, for Liverpool to, uh, to win another title, um, it's not gonna happen. City is too good. It, it is all with me saying that I don't, uh, I'm not getting excited about City, but it's not going to happen. City is simply too good. I cannot imagine them losing two games for the rest of the season. And I mean, just saying that is ridiculous in many ways, given that the Premier League uh, likes to be put as the um, best league in the world, in a way. I mean, Europe means meaning the world in the sense where there's some comp comp competition, but they have such a lead, they have such quality in, in the squad that uh, it would be a it would be a crumbling of epic proportions that I don't foresee coming. So Liverpool will probably get a safe second spot, the same way as Chelsea. Uh, they can stumble and uh, humble uh, and huff and puff, whatever they want. They will they, they will end and then third because whatever's behind them is even worse. And um, you know if Aston Villa had any. Uh, how to say aspirations to maybe make a challenge for the U European spot? That one got killed by Newcastle. A great Kieran Trippier free kick uh, when there was a penalty call initially, but you know, seemingly Trippier is uh, as good on the free kicks as he is on the penalty spot. That seemed to be a great signing. And Newcastle now also getting a few wins uh, in a row. Seemingly going into safety, one has, has to say. Then the big one was uh, Spurs against Wolves, uh, it has to has, has be said. But, you know, uh, if Hugo Lloris is not on form and the uh, stupid saves or whatever, and the whole defense is not there, they seemingly didn't get the memo that they, the game is starting at 3 o'clock, uh, <laughs> you're not going to win anything. It's just that, that simple. So after 20, 20 minutes, uh, Jimenez and then Donka made it 2-0. Wolves defensively south. And then in the second half, there were two chances um, for Spurs. The one, I think, Harry Winks, uh, it got deflected on, on, onto the post and then one shot by Kulusevski. Then honestly, uh, yes, it was a tough shot to, 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 to take, but at least get in a goal. I mean, if he, if he puts in a goal, it goes in. And then there is a chance there. But uh, I could see from the few attacks... That have I, mean, I watched that the game mainly second half and from the few attacks that I saw, I this is one of those where Spurs are just not gonna score. They can play for an hour more and they will not score, and that's exactly how I, how, how, how I tapped in the last 50 minutes. I said, okay, let's watch the pregame to the last game. Yeah. 
that's a whole diff, diff, different story for a different video. And then it finished with uh, Leicester and West Ham. You know, West Ham, another team. You have a chance. You can solidify your spot as your claim for, 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 for top four. You, all you need is a win at Leicester, who have been struggling. You take Dooley the lead in the 10th minute through Bowen, but then Tielemans and Pereira turn around for Leicester. Deservedly so, one has to say. And Dawson then salvages a point with a late equalizer. But yeah. As I said, everyone in the top four race either did not play or really, really uh, pooped their pants. And I, I think with the loss by Spurs to Wolves, it kind of opened the door for Wolves uh, in a way as well, which is pretty uh, amazing to uh, be able to say, say this. At the moment, my model says that Arsenal are the favorites going into the four with a whooping 66%. Man mentioned that a 20% chance. Then West Ham, West Ham and Spurs 8 and Wolves with 4. And even little Brighton has a TD smidgen of a chance. Um, I think we have to just wait out and see. But uh, it's anyone's guess. I mean, there was a time when I said it was Spurs. There was a long time when I said United should finish in top four with the squad they're having. I, at one point, I thought Arsenal is going for it. Arsenal and Spurs maybe can push themselves uh, each other. Um, now Wolves is in there. And to be honest, the one team that I would love to <laughs> go, 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 go in there is West Ham, which I also don't think because they have too many injuries. So... Take your guess. On the bottom, though, uh, things are also interesting. Although I think that Newcastle, with those two wins, they got themselves a little bit out of trouble and they're slowly rising, still with 37% going down. Norwich and Watford more or less seem down. Burnley have many, many games in hand, but uh, they probably could pick up some power, power, power points, but they are at the moment uh, uh, also on third team to go down. Uh, Everton, with that win, as I said, got themselves some premium. I mean, there is considerable distance now between uh, Everton, Newcastle, also with Everton with a few ga games in hand. Brentford and Leeds. And I, I think Brent Brentford is a team that uh, we got to watch out at the moment because they have been trending, unfortunately, in the wrong direction. Now, um, upcoming come games next Saturday, I think a pretty interesting was already early, early kickoff between West Ham and Newcastle. That could be a uh, rather decisive game. I uh, want to also see Arsenal Brentford. I think there's quite some interesting stuff there. Now, uh, can Chelsea do some, again, anything against Crystal Palace? Liverpool should win against Norwich uh, and then City against Spurs. It's, you know, City Spurs, it's kind of, there's always something happening there, but we gotta see uh, a kind of a West Midlands story between Wolves and Leicester, maybe, and, and then a uh, classic between Leeds United and Man 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 Manchester United, although this was always going Manchester United's way. So yeah, I would like to hear who you think will finish top four. I think this is the most interesting thing, but it's also a rather comical race where, uh, yeah, it reminds me a lot of the Spanish title race last season, where just everyone that had, that seemed to be in pole position is crumbling again. As I said, in those cases, I usually go with the squad that seems to be the most talented one, and all, with all the troubles they have, I would say still meant Manchester United. But Arsenal, maybe. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below. I'll subscribe to my channel and see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.